This show is brought to you by Tracker. Never lose anything again with Tracker. Listeners to this show, The Church of What's Happening Now, get a special discount of 30% off of your entire order. Go to the tracker.com, T H E tracker.com, and enter promo code church. That's the tracker.com promo code church to get 30% off of your entire order. And the show is brought to you by onit.com. Go to onit.com and use code word church to get 10% off your order of all the great optimization products like Alpha Brain, New Mood, Shroom Tech Immune, and Shroom Tech Sport. Oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> We're getting this motherfucker started tonight with the Irish. Take it, Lee. <laughs> oh shit. Wednesday, April 13th, two more days till the Jungle Book comes out, uh, oh shit, in 3D, motherfucker, where will you be, uh, at a bar with a bunch of stiffs, not me, stone to the gills with little kids, and Jungle Book, Jungle Book, Jungle Book, Jungle Book, book, motherfuckers, Jungle Book, the church, uh, what's up? Lee Sayat. Uh, You're, I, get, I used to love the Jungle Book when I was a kid. It comes out fucking Friday. I don't even, listen, I don't even give a fuck. The Jungle Book Friday in 3D. Now let me explain You're something. You're going to go in 3D? 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm taking two of these fucking green stars or maybe 18 of them. <laughs> and I'm taking my daughter with my wife. We go, we get some popcorn, a hot dog. Once, if it goes sour, we give the baby fucking raisinettes so she loses her mind. And we get out of there, she's just yelling and screaming like a fucking uh, like convicted felon. And if not, <laughs> we sit there with her with the 3D glasses on. And she takes them off and on because she doesn't understand. Oh, you can't I tell thought it was phenomenal. I'm telling you that Zootopia, if you get a chance to see it in 3D, whether you have a nephew or a niece or not, nobody's going to judge you. If you go to the 10 o'clock and sit in the corner by yourself, it's a great film, and I'm telling you this. I was more was it Pixar or do you know? Because the, all these movies now are amazing. Like when you go, I used to go late at night when I was in college because then it's all like people. It's like twenty year olds and thirty year olds who just like like they look all like Wally up. All these movies are great they're movies, not, guys. They're entertaining, very entertaining. But so is my guest tonight. That I got a fucking. I mean, it's just been a great. Pleasure to meet you, oh. Dr. Belize. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Your last name? Vranich. Yeah, Vranich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can it. stick with Belize. Oh, yeah. uh, what's up, Doc? Yeah, good. I'm glad to be here. Now, how long are you yeah. in town for, Doc? I'm in town for another week, and then I go back to New York for a month, and then I come back here and back and forth and back and forth. Did you do any things today? Did you uh, work with people yeah, today? Yeah, yeah. I saw a couple people today. I wrote some stuff, you know, write, see people, take care of my dog. <laughs> now, <laughs> let everybody yeah. know what you do. So um, I'm founder of The Breathing Class, which is exactly what it sounds like. I've always gotten yelled at uh, about changing the name. You know, get a name like Lululemon. Why don't you get a name like uh, Spin Classes, like uh, Pure Yoga? And I can't, it's The Breathing Class. That's what it is. I teach people to breathe. So I'm a clinical psychologist from a million years ago, and I switched over to teach people breathing. And uh, whether it's endurance for sports or stress reduction, it works. I love doing it, and, and that's what I do. Now, yeah. when you say you work with somebody for endurance, mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm a track runner. I'm young, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. 32. I want to run the Ironman, whatever. What kind of, how much work goes in on the other side? Okay, well, 32. It's not like you're going to touch them. And do three because he, yeah. I've heard this shit before. Like that, somebody was telling me, "There's a guy in Burbank. You go down there, and he touches your lungs, and you get endurance." To me, that sounds mm, fucking far fetched. No, because they believe that the 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 rib cage is attached to the to the lung, and the lung won't expand. And I heard that, and I'm like, something don't sound right there. That I heard that about right a year me. ago. I was like, that that's not gonna work. No, how no. long would a person have to work 
to increase their, their endurance, endurance with your principles. Okay. Well, let's think about, first of all, is that if you're 32, um, you your lung capacity actually grows until you're 29. So you've already started to plateau as far as your breathing at 32. It's not like you're going to get better. Your breathing's going to get better. It's actually going to get worse. So you need to start doing breathing exercises. I'd say you can make a change if you're super motivated within a week, definitely within two. So I've seen people get the exercises, do them crazy, do them uh, with like incredible motivation and focus and change their endurance within a week, 10 days. Absolutely, you can do that. I can't touch your chest and have it happen in a couple seconds. Definitely not, but I don't know about that. Now, how yeah. did... I read somewhere where you worked in Jacques Cousteau. Yeah, I did work with Jacques Cousteau. Get out Cousteau. of here. Where? Yeah, and so in New York, and, and then I got moved over to the office in Paris. It was great. I mean, hey, I wasn't on the boat. I wasn't on the boat. But I was a big Cousteau fan before. Me too. I, I mean, you know, you the learned scuba so much diving. From me. Yeah, you learned wow. so much. Wow. So, no, I know a lot. I mean, I loved marine life beforehand. And my French was uh, uh, my second major. So I wanted a jo- job with Jacques Cousteau that had anything to do with animals and, and water. And, you know, even though I was in New York, I didn't get to go on the boat. But he was around. His family was around. It was a really great experience. No, nice your, stuff. Your resume yeah. is just... When it comes to breathing, you're like the Jeet Kune Do of breathing. <laughs> You've, uh, and it's very smart. I love that about people. I hate people who show up and say, well, over at Harvard, I specialize in this, and this is how it is. And somebody's going to say, listen, I read this journal and this and this and this, and this is what I took from each person, and this is what, what kind of, and in my world, they call us, not synopsis, what's the other word? An educated guess in a way, uh-huh. like a, but a proven guess. Yeah. I could tell by your confidence. Yeah. You know, we had an email, and then you called me, and you told me to do this, and we tried to connect on, on a private level, yeah. and I was always busy because it was pilot season, mm. and then I saw that you were doing a seminar, and I just signed up without calling you. Uh-huh. I was just excited. I was in town the same week you were there, you know, and uh, what really made me want to put you on the podcast and what really was your call to me on Sunday. It was distressing, but not... Fatal, you know mm-hmm, what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. We could work on my lung power and do mm-hmm. all these things. But it really touched me that there's still people who believe in customer service, who call oh, yeah. and will send you stuff afterward and will call again and keep in touch with you. You know who called me yesterday? Anthony Hardock. I got in my car. I'm like, who's the fucking 310 number? Yeah. It was Anthony. He goes, it was great to see you. Boom, I'm in. Yeah. That's the school of thought I was raised yeah. from, you know? Like, I was yeah. going to call you Monday. Yeah. I'm not going to call somebody on the yeah. Lord's Day. You didn't give a fuck. No. <laughs> I didn't. And that's how I I work with people is that um, if you're motivated and you want to get better or you're motivated and you want to get, you know, rid of your whatever medical problem you have or your better endurance, if you're into this, if you want to, you know, work with me, I'm excited about it. I love people who want to change and want to get better. And um, I will call you. I will remind you. Um, It's tough love because I'm going to say things you may not like. But I'll say things that no other doctor has ever told you before. Because a lot of doctors will pussyfoot around. They'll say, well, I don't want to tell my patient this because then I'll have them here for another hour and they'll be calling and I'm just going to write this script. But um, no, I, no, I everything I'm, about you. I'm yeah. liable. Mm-hmm. Then I'm liable if I tell. There's something going on mm-hmm. inside with me. Yeah. I know there is. It's, it's, it's not lung cancer or nothing like that. But, you know, I go to acupuncture. I go to the heart doctor. He does all the fucking inks through the mm-hmm. heart and all that stuff. The problem, uh, who, oh, you were telling yeah. me, you, you were like, you should have been on some type of oxygen therapy. Yep. When I go to the sleep apnea doctor, yep. the first thing they do to me is I blow in some fucking bugle. Yeah, you did. You did, you did the bugle. You did the bugle in my class. And yep. I know it's fucking terrible yep. because I can't even finish it. It's like yeah. a fucking, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it doesn't take a genius. I'm no med school student, but I know it's not good. Yeah. The lady walks away and nobody says dick to me. Yeah. They come back and they ask me when I'm doing a sleep study. Okay. And and what I say to you, I yeah. said, I'm already done the sleep study. What the fuck am I going to go back in there and get tortured for? They put a mask on you and then turn the head down to two and watch you squirm around like fucking Hannibal Lecter at the end. <laughs> like they oh, electrocute yeah. me. Fuck mm. you. Well, that was kind of my question. It sounds like a silly question, but why is breathing so important? Okay. You know, and I have to say the short version of that is right. that it's the cornerstone of your health. So if you're not breathing well, you can do everything after that. It's just not going to work as well. 
So it's ox, it's cell fuel. It fuels your entire body. And it's what your brain works on, what your organs work on, what your muscles work on. Think about it. Everything you do is to get more oxygen in your body. When you take supplements, you know, you're working out. All the things that you do are so that you can um, use the oxygen better and get more oxygen in your body. So why not actually just breathe better? I mean, doing all the other stuff is good too, but just start with breathing better. It sounds a lot, a lot of what Joey talks about on the show is uh, like getting to the root of the problem, really. Like just getting to the, the most simple step. So you can, it's like when, it, when people do like, for a podcast, they'll do weird stuff that you don't really need to do, like weird videos or whatever. And before you can work out, I guess you have to be able to breathe. Like before yeah. you can do any of that, you have it's to It's very it. cut to the chase. Um, and that's my MO, uh, even as a therapist, because I was a therapist for 25 years, I was very cut to the chase. I was. I used to give people homework. It was very dynamic. I didn't sit back and go, okay, well, make an appointment with me you know, four times a week for 10 years. That was not my, I mean, a lot of people wanted that and needed that. That's not my, the way I work. It needs to be dynamic. You need to do your homework. I will love you. I will call you. I'll do anything you need to get your goals done, but you got to work with me. It's very dynamic and, and you see change immediately. So, um, so that's why, I mean, your body needs oxygen, but I also, I mean, it needs a balance of oxygen. If I'm going to be more specific, it's that more and more and more oxygen isn't better. It's a combination of, of having a balance of carbon dioxide and oxygen in your body and using the right muscles, which is what Joey learned about, what muscles you have in your body that help you breathe better, and he's making those stronger. So, yeah. I did the twist today. Yeah. The side bends. Nice. I did the kettlebell on my stomach with the breathing, let try to, your belly button to hit the back. Yeah. I read another chapter. I just, uh, I got to tell you, it's sad. Because that was my forte growing up, mm-hmm. that I could, you know, me and these girls, Kathy Moran, we were fucking geeks in the eighth grade. And yeah, I went around the corner and smoked pot with the long-haired kids once. But you know what? My, I loved, I wanted to get really good at basketball. So I knew in the fourth quarter, what do you need? Fucking endurance, okay? And I would sit against the wall and work on my muscles to get tight in the eighth grade and seventh grade. But she was a track runner in the high school. They were older than I was. Her and her girlfriends. And I would go to them and say, dog, I don't know nothing about running. And they would go, okay, just come to the high. And we'd go to McKinley first. And they had a, like a hundred yard concrete fucking platform. You went to my grammar school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And her and I would walk out 40 yards, and we'd do 40-yard sprints. And another kid, Pancho, Cuban kid, stole the the hurdles. And I tried the hurdles, and I was really good at them. And, you know, I I started playing basketball when I was a a freshman. I could hold on to the rim, and I was two inches away from dunking, and I could run. And I remember running from, you know, I come from the second hilliest town in the country. I come from North Bergen, New Jersey. On paper, look it up on you. It's the second hilliest town behind San Francisco. Jeez. When I first moved to North Bergen, the cemetery is one of the bottom of the hills. So when it would rain, the graves would wash out. <gasps> they just fucking fixed that. Maybe, maybe twenty what, bucks. Like, what ago. happened? Like with the the like, bottom of Forty Sixth Street, a casket was floating down no. there. No, a, a fucking tuxedo with a half a skeleton. That's what. Mm. Down your fucking block. And then they had to get engineering and mm. redo it back because the cemetery would wash out. You know, the cemetery's fucking old. So, that's you know, a good movie, that's right? terrifying. <laughs> me and this fucking, me and these girls would run up. Like we'd walk up the first hill and we'd lightly jog the second hill. And we'd go from fucking, north, we'd go from 39th Street, you know, on a light jog all the way to 88th Hudson County Park and then run around the lake 18 times <laughs> and then run back home. And then in 94, what does 94 put me? 31 years old. When I was 30, they used to have this bike trail in North Bergen that you rode up Boulevard East overlooking New York City skyline. So there you are riding up. You go to the, you go all the way to fucking the George Washington Bridge and then you ride across on the bike and then you go all the way down the West Side Highway to the ferry, and then you take the ferry across. That's your only breather. And then when you get to the other side, that one of those ports, if you look up the Weehawken, there's stairs that are attached to the mountain, Lee, and it's just attached, and it's endless. You see, you see elevators, but then you see these stairs that go up. 
So me and these gorillas used to grab our bicycles, hold the bicycles, <laughs> and run up those fucking stairs like gorillas to the top. I never huffed. I never puffed. Mm -hmm. Who knew what the fuck happened? My endurance was always money. Mm -hmm. 30 years, 20 years of doing cocaine, your endurance got to count for something. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of endurance overnight. I smoked cigarettes for a few years. You know, not early on, but later on in my life. And I stopped. I'll tell you what was fucking me up. The vapor pens. Those little vapor things, I think they fuck you up a little bit. My hmm. breathing was off after that. But the anxiety started two years ago after an ear infection. I never had that if I can't get air anxiety. Mm -hmm. Ever, ever, mm -hmm. ever before in my life. But your body's pissed when you said you know that something's wrong with your body. Because that's most people that come to me, they'll come with me to me for specific reasons. But then I get that person who goes, I know something's wrong, but I don't know what. And they usually touch their chest. I know, like I know intuitively, something is not right inside. I've got tons of prescriptions. I've got doctors. I've got appointments. But something isn't right, and I don't think that I'm get, getting addressed with my appointments. So you're going to get better. You're definitely going to. I, you may not do those stairs with the, with the bike because <laughs> that sounds crazy, but we're definitely, you're going to get better because, like I said, it's the cornerstone of your health. So we're going to see your blood pressure come down. Everything. Everything's going to get better. My blood pressure's really come down the last couple of years. I think my health and fitness, I mean, it's very deceiving what's going on with my body sometimes because I've always been a big boned, not fat, but just a thick dude. And once I added weights to my regimen, it really, like, there's, there's nights when I'm sleeping and I go to roll over and I feel my leg and I don't know whose leg it is. Ooh. Because that's how different my body has got. Like, it's hard now, you know. Yeah. I love all this shit I'm doing now. But when it comes to my breathing, and something, you said something at the seminar. You said something happened. Till this day, I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. Because I was fine. Mm -hmm. I swam. When I went back to the Y, when I got really heavy, I started, when I was 418, I walked into, I did a commercial at, with, G, with you know the dude who's got Parkinson's, the boxing coach, right here in Hollywood, where Pacquiao trains, wild card. Okay, I did a commercial there, and I met a guy named Macafoley. And during the thing, Macafoley goes, "I say, oh, you're in a movie. You were very funny." And he goes, "I got to be honest with you, man. You could be funny for a long time. You should lose some weight. Why don't you come to the gym and throw some mitts with me? I'll train you for a while, even if it's for free, just to get you started." I had nothing to lose. I was 400 fucking pounds. So I started going over there, and I couldn't believe how hard I was working and how slow it took the weight to come off. Mm. And I was still drinking three or four cans of fucking Coke every day, you know. And finally, I read an article about no matter how much you exercise, you still need to control your diet. Your diet's the number one thing, you know. And I kept going. But at that time, I used to have to wear two pair of underwear. I was thinking about you to give you more history. Uh -huh. Because when I couldn't breathe, I'd pee my pants. Mm -hmm. My pants couldn't, my breathing couldn't control yep. my little dick and yep. my breathing at the same time. Is that a common thing? Because you're, you're, you're like, you don't seem surprised. You know what? I'm a, th you know, my, I did 25 years of therapy with people. You, you got to say something really crazy to get me to blush or think it's nuts. I've heard some crazy. No, no, no. I didn't say yeah. it to get her yeah. to no, blush. No, no, no. no. I, I, I'm I just saying to see if she ever yeah. heard it before. Yeah, that's what I was no. asking. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. So, no. you know what? So, um, your pelvic floor. And we did this in class. We talked about your pelvic floor. It's the 20 muscles on the bottom of your body. It's connected to your diaphragm, your thoracic diaphragm. Like those two things. Remember, we did this in class where here's your body, right? So your pelvic diaphragm is down here. Your thoracic diaphragm is up on top. So they're related. So that your breathing had something to do with your pelvic floor with that happening makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. Everything's going to get stronger. Everything's going to get stronger. We can go back to one pair of underwear, for sure. Oh, no, no, <laughs> not a one pair of underwear, but this, yeah. was, this was wild. Yeah. I'd go, the round would be over, and he'd say, go in your in your corner. Yeah. And I would feel the pee going out of my pants. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing I could do. Yeah. I wasn't going to make the bathroom. If I walked to the bathroom, I'd have a heart attack. Like by trying to hold the pee at yeah. the same time, I'd have a heart attack. When did that start? That started when I hit 418, because when I was shooting the longest shot, I didn't have those problems. But when I was shooting the longest shot, believe it or not, when I was in Albuquerque, they gave me oxygen. 
Mm-hmm. The doctor of the team said, come here for a second. I'm going to give you oxygen. I'm thinking about mm-hmm. all these things mm-hmm. now, just mm-hmm. so you know. But I'm also thinking about switching sleep apnea doctors now that you also told me that. Because after they look at that, they should make some type of assessment. Your numbers were really low. Really low. You were really low. I know. I can't blow like a fucking candle out. Yeah. We did an exercise with our fingers. Yeah. Oh, look at that. He's breathing perfectly now, Oh, because I've been doing a thousand of these fucking things. I'm watching him now. That is so weird because It's so weird because sometimes (gasps) you lose the focus and you're sucking in and you're sucking in and you're blowing out. So you really, really got to focus. But when I read your book, it says repeat, 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 and and you'll cause the new habit. Break from zero to 50, what happens? Because I have a three-year-old, and when you look at Mercy from the side, she looks like a fat little fuck. But when you look at her straight ahead, she's tiny, long, and scant, limp. And it's because when she watches TV, <laughs> uh, yep. she's breathing. She's breathing right. She's breathing. So Inhale, you made a exhale, point that yep. we breathe normally to yep. five. Yep. And what happens? And then, okay, so what happens? <clears throat> five years old. So she and her little belly go to school, right? Cute little belly. She doesn't know. You know, she's just happy to be a little kid. Go to be- go to school, and what happens? Somebody pokes her in the belly and goes, fatty, right? Because kids are mean. Because kids are mean. So all of a sudden, she comes home, she thinks she's fat. And that starts decades of sucking in your gut. Decades of, like, sucking in your gut so that you feel or you look skinnier. And then we're told that that makes you stronger, too. And that doesn't make you stronger. Really bracing your belly does not make you stronger. Inhaling, letting it go, and actually working your abs and squeezing on the exhale, that makes you stronger. But just bracing your middle doesn't. So other things that happen, she starts sitting, because Americans sit. How many hours a day do you think Americans sit? All day. Yeah, like, pretty much like, all day. How many hours? You know? At least 10, 12? <laughs> 13 to 16 hours a day. But that's when you factor in the driving, yeah. the lunches, you know. Everything Most people sit at a desk all day. I'll tell you yeah. what, I, I can't lie to you. I forgot the number because you mentioned yeah. it on that. The yeah. And the other day I did something and I stood. Yeah. I just started nice. standing more. And little things, man, because if it's little not me, you know, I fly. I fly five hours one fucking uh-huh. way. You don't think I get up and stretch my calves? Yep. Yep. And when I sit down, my you know acupuncture yep. said uh, they call the calf the the heart of the leg, the mm-hmm. second pump. So instead of moving around, sometimes I just do leg lifts at my seat. Good. To keep the blood going, so you don't get that shit where you, know, you get like a blood clot blood or whatever clot. the fuck it is. I just, so uh, it's crazy. I just found out recently in the past couple of years that girls suck in. Like, I've always been chubby, but I've never once sucked in. Like, I can imagine sucking in yeah. all day. But then again, think about it, especially little girls. You start wearing clothes, and they're tighter. You start wearing compression garments. You have, like, you know, little sports bras. Sports bras will squeeze the hell out of you, you know? And exactly where you want to be opening up and breathing. So then we're told, you know, the posture. You tell somebody to sit up straight, the first thing they do is they pull in their gut. If you get injured, and I mean with sports now, kids get injured, or you fall off your skateboard or sled, you get hit in the middle of your body, you don't want to take a deep breath, it hurts there. And then you look at everybody around you and your little kid, and they're raising their shoulders when they breathe, so you think that's the right way to breathe. So all of a sudden you're sucking in your little gut and you're breathing like this, like your parents do. Unless you stop them and you teach them, because you take a deep breath like mom and dad and you show them the right way to breathe. So, which is through the middle of your body, pretty much from your armpits to your to your pelvis, is where you should be breathing from. But none of this up and down with your shoulders. Nah. Yeah. Did I, I want to see that inhale and exhale again? That was good. That made me happy. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm man. trying. It's I got to tell you, his flexibility. I was amazed. Three hours, you sat there. You have some flexibility. Well, <laughs> Holy cow! Even when I was really heavy, I always stretched that night. Yeah. I had this guilt over me. And I was always involved in martial arts and stretching. And then my wife took me to yoga a few times. Yeah. And I really enjoyed like the uh, like the downward, do- not, yeah, well, downward, downward dog, dogs yeah. and the child's pose. And then yeah. uh, the one, the cat cloud yeah. pose. I Which we did in class, it. yeah. Right, and that's what I've been doing for nice. the breathing. And I enjoy a good stretch. In fact, I was me and my wife made like the same commitment. She's been over at her yoga place for five months. She she went and bought ten passes and just she always had a problem with the why, 
And then one of her girlfriends took her to another place, and that place was too fucking... My wife's from Tennessee. She don't buy into the woo and, you know, the fucking... <laughs> you know. The woo-woo-woo. Yeah, she just, you know, and, and, it, and at first when I started dating, it kind of bothered me about her. Because some of the shit to me is interesting, but some of the shit is just so out there. It's just white people trying to be fucking crazy, you know. And at the Y, there was a little click of that. There was this little, like, Japanese girl, very cute, and she'd go in there, you know, with her perfect little body. She was 22, filthy feet. The feet were always filthy, like way beyond dirty, like the, the dirt had stuck onto her feet. <clears throat> because she did yoga dances where a bunch of people play bongos. What they do? The line dance, the line, yeah. the conga line, and they talk to the angels while they do downward dog and shit. That my <laughs> wife will not tolerate. <laughs> You know, that one, my There's wife. There's no woo in my class. I, there's a little bit of woo. You know, at the end, we do a meditation. No, no, no. That but was yeah, great. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. In yoga, it's called Shavasana. Yeah. There we go. Shavasana, right, yeah. I, when I try to do that at yeah. home, when I lay down, I go, this is just Shavasana nice. while I move my hips and yeah. breathe and, and exhale. Breathe. Yeah. Instead of just laying there like a fucking mummy. <laughs> it was funny because I used to go to a German, listen, we used to go to yoga together. Me and my wife, before she got knocked up, I got divorced when I was young, and it bothered me that I got divorced. It really bothered me, because that's the most simple thing as a relation. How can you fucking divorce somebody? What the fuck is wrong with Americans? You know what I'm saying? That is the simplest form of friendship. Is is uh, So I got... So when you do comedy, you get lost sometimes, you know? Not that you get lost, but you forget where you stand, even as... And I didn't want to lose Terry, so... I'd pick her up and we'd run home on Tuesdays and we'd go to yoga together. But our favorite yoga class, which I went just to get high and giggle. You had to be a monster. It was called Power Yoga on Tuesdays. And it was taught by a German chick. And I mean, when I tell German, this chick was Hitler's niece. <laughs> and she never lost the accent. So she would go, Shavazana. <laughs> like, I, I, don't even do, I don't even give it justice. No, no, it's she good. did it very German. Yeah, I can't. And imagine. we, me and my wife, would leave. Like, I'd be fucking crushed. Crushed. She'd have me picking up my leg. And Joey, you could do this one more sun salutation <laughs> down, up. She'd say, I'll lose 100 pounds. You come to my class. And she taught somewhere else. Like, she taught, like, in Venice. Oh. Like three days, she goes, if you come to my class in Venice twice a week, I'll have you 100 pounds lighter. <laughs> and she would say, I'll have your breathing restructured, and I'll have that fat falling right off you. And I used to look at like, you're crazy. So me and my wife used to call it Joe the German. And after a while, I'm like, I can't go to Joe the German no more, though. She fucking kills me. But she was a big stick on Shavasana. She really stressed the breathing, and she walked around, and she made the adjustments, and she I did love other the stuff to your yeah. things. And yeah, yeah. Well, how often do we really pause and just relax a little bit? We don't. We don't really pause and do nothing and really do nothing. It doesn't happen. You're always checking your phone or going somewhere or coming back or worrying about something or regretting something. Just really doing nothing for a couple seconds. Good for you. I have been, since this little thing, I this little, it concerned me. As soon as I went to jiu-jitsu the first time and did a hip escape and tried to jiu-jitsu wise, I went home mortified. Like, And then I tried to get high and go to class. Mm -hmm. like, I get high to do anything. I went and did, got high one time, went to jiu-jitsu class. I thought, I thought I was dead. I thought I was dead. I had to go outside and breathe and take my gi top off between the heat because you got to get used to that heat, that heat at first. And I'm a hot dude. You know what I'm saying? I go to the doctor and the chick who takes my blood pressure goes, you're a hot fucking dude. Like, you're <laughs> hot-blooded. I'm like, I'm Cuban, dog. I, I wake up at 190 over 180. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm one of those motherfuckers. I dream about yelling and screaming and jumping up and down and somebody stealing my fucking chocolate cake or something like that. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I have some crazy dreams, too. I have some really, like... I don't have dreams. Yeah. I can't lie to you. I, yeah. I just... No, it's weird. The alpha brain will yeah, give yeah. you a vivid dreams. Yeah. Uh, whenever I go on an alpha brain cycle, I'll get my dreams. I'll get like they come back in color. Yeah. But Ooh. I tell you what, I I know I talk in my sleep with that fucking sleep apnea mask on because my wife tells me she'll tell me you're having a conversation with the mask you know, and I just heard a bunch of fucking mumbling and stumbling <laughs> in there. But I know you talk Spanish. I always talk Spanish in when, my dreams. dreams. So I'm dreaming about something when I was a kid. Always with my mother talking with my father. 
an uncle. I always dream in Spanish. So this this concerns me because one of the things that happens is you talk a lot. You talk for your job. You talk in between your job and wherever you're going and coming from. And now you're, I'm hearing that you talk in your sleep. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> Poor Terry. I'm no, 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 no. But I don't. She doesn't. She hits me with this like three times a year. One thing about me is that when I first moved to L.A., I didn't say no. And by 2004, I wasn't suicidal, but I was, I didn't have a life. I didn't have, you know, I was with my wife from 2000 to probably 2003. I didn't see her on a holiday. I didn't believe in it. I'm, I'm trying to go after a dream here. You know what I'm saying? You want to get married and, and get mushy? Well, let's do this first. And then we'll fucking get married. But who wants to get married to fucking struggle all that goddamn life? Who the fuck wants to do this shit? Yeah, we'll, we'll get it. Well, this ain't no fucking Bon Jovi song, bitch. It's 2016. You know, it's 269 the least, motherfucker. And that's with zero <laughs> down. You know what I'm talking about? You know, we bought, what's that Bon Jovi song? That's great. I believe in that too. But you got to work. You know what I'm saying? Listen, man. But then I thought back about, because I was looking at it as a person that didn't have a family. I did have a family. She was my family. I looked at it as a Cuban single dude who didn't have parents or an uncle. Fuck it. I'm not going to sit at home. I might as well go to Houston and try to make a little money and stuff. And then I, I go, I, I've been dating this girl for so long and living with her. I got to start spending more time with her. So I started spending holidays with her and stuff like that. And since like 2005, I really appreciate my time because I know how fast Hollywood could be. I could be sitting, I've told Lee a thousand times. I go, Lee, I could be sitting here with you, making plans, and all of a sudden I'll get a call. They come up with a new TV show. And it's going to happen. It's going to happen, Lee. Well, one day I'm going to call you and go, no, I, I booked some show. And I got to work fucking six days a week. And I got to be there at six in the morning. I'm working till six at night. They want to come in and fucking talk to you. Oh, mm -hmm. Lee, no, come and is, talk to no, you. No, this is Thank my you. dog. He knows the truth. <laughs> He knows, he knows how we do it. He was looking so sad. He got a little tears in his eye when you were saying But when that. I'm home at night, I relax, yeah. man. Nice. When I go home at night, it's not about me and my wife. I keep, listen, my wife is white. Real wife from Tennessee. You get her started, <laughs> you, you ain't going to shut her up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, if I tell her a story about my uncle stabbing a dude, she'll tell me a story about one time her and her sister killed the fly. And, and it won't fucking end. You understand me? <laughs> It won't fucking it was, end. It was a big fly. <laughs> yeah, it won't end. So I don't try to entice my wife too much. And once I entice her, I pray for the fucking phone to ring. You understand me? Once she starts going off, the other day she shoot. Bro, my wife's smart, man. And sometimes I get myself in a fucking well, and she won't shut the fuck up. Don't get her started on politics. Mm. She'll start torturing with the super delegates and shit, and you're praying for that fucking phone to ring. <laughs> you're sitting there, please, somebody fucking call already. <laughs> Lord, please, I don't give a fuck if it's a wrong number. <laughs> if they're selling the carpet, I'm buying I'm it buying just to it. cancel this fucking conversation. <laughs> so I try uh, to keep it light at the house, and I really like the two hours before I get up in the morning because I spend two hours by myself, and I don't say two fucking words. Nice. I sit there Good. without the TV on. I put a notebook. I get coffee. I smoke a couple of mm -hmm. I listen to my heart pound. Now I breathe. So now I got the chair, and I just do my little hip things in the mm -hmm. chair. You Can you hear your heartbeat, though? No. I eat it. You eat that fucking star. You'll yeah. hear it pounding in your head <laughs> like one of those yeah. Disney. No, you yeah. can hear it. Yeah? Okay, good, because I got a breath for you to practice that. Yeah. You, you can hear it. It's with like your... That. Okay. I got the advanced stuff to give you because you're now, you went through the beginner, you're in advance. No, let me ask you this, okay, yeah. just for people at mm -hmm. home. How does this help with blood pressure? Oh, it's direct. Blood pressure is actually the, the medical condition that has the most research behind it when it comes to breathing, the most. Lots of other things, not as much. There are studies and some don't have studies yet. And I'll tell you, it's my, you know, medical intuition or whatever. But blood pressure, there is a lot of science <coughs> that shows you control your breathing. You take a breath where it's helping your parasympathetic, where it's helping that calming breath, and your blood pressure will come down. It's, con it's intimately connected. In fact, you can't breathe with that lower body breath without your blood pressure being affected. 
And if you actually want to do the opposite, when I work with actors and they want to get upset and they want to get more into whatever upset state they're in, depending on their role, they have to breathe with an upper body breath and their blood pressure will go up, their heart rate will go up, their cortisol will go up. Yeah. So it's completely connected, which is wild. That's why I actually like working with blood pressure patients because you can see your blood pressure come down and you can keep it down. So all of a sudden you start realizing, I actually have a lot of control over my body. And we actually talked about this, is that it sounds like I'm giving you bad news that you're in trouble, but the good news is that you're in trouble, but your breathing is gonna change things and you have ultimate control over your breathing. None of your doctors do, none of the prescriptions do, you can change your breathing. So your blood pressure is actually something that we're going to watch go down it's pretty quickly. It's so funny. Like, I've been doing the exercises, and you have to really think and control yourself and control your breathing. But what I found to be the most interesting, how is uh, you, you told me to focus on the exhales. Yeah. But you tense up. Like, I still tense up to control everything still. You know, I still tense up, but then all of a sudden your mind goes, stop tensing. And all of a sudden now you're breathing a little easier. Yeah. And I know that it's like karate. It's like anything else that you learn, single movements, they always want you to over-exaggerate them. Mm -hmm. So the repetition, and then in your book I also read repeat, repeat, repeat. So I know that right now I'm just over-exaggerating. You know, I know I'm doing a belly workout with this. You are. Yeah. When I wake up sore? the next day. A little bit. I yeah. was sore the Sunday after the seminar. And what did I do Sunday? I think I did kettlebell Sunday. Monday, I had a busy day. Tuesday, I went to jiu-jitsu. And today, I went to jiu-jitsu. You're a maniac. That's what I did. That's good. And now I got no option. I got to yeah. go to jiu-jitsu tomorrow because yeah. it's there. The opportunity's yeah. there. And that's the commitment I'm cheap. Because mm -hmm. my fear was getting on my back. Mm -hmm. But that fear of being on my back stemmed from sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. I pushed my sleep apnea to the fucking hilt. And, you know, when I and, and we've discussed sleep apnea on the show before. You have no idea what it is to, to you have no idea, Lee. Once that sleep apnea comes, you have no fucking idea. People kept telling me I had it. Like, I don't, I, don't, I, didn't, I never woke up choking, but I, I was a huge snore. So people always told me I should go get checked. What is what is your girlfriend say now? To you? Now I don't. Now she used to have to wear earplugs. Well, you lost a lot of weight. Yeah, you've lost a lot of weight. So, so the weight went down. So that was the same thing. At four eighteen, you couldn't sleep three doors down. <laughs> you couldn't sleep three doors down. My well, poor wife was. Well, if you think about exactly what that is, so that noise is that there's something in the way. There's there's tissue. You know, fat. Fat in fat the way. Fat in the fucking tubes. Mm -hmm. it's, don't say, t it's fucking fat. Who yeah. are you kidding? You yeah. know? And it's weight. You know, that's the other thing I factor in. Like, when I first went to jiu-jitsu, I got so fucking discouraged. And I went home and I felt really bad. And I go, whoa, 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 wait a second. First of all, this isn't me. That's number one. I don't get discouraged. I'm not good at fucking mechanics. And I'm not good at fixing a computer. But that's never been my aptitude. God never gave me that aptitude. When I was a kid and I got a flat tire, I threw the bike away and I bought another one for fourteen ninety five. Okay, I sold that one for eight, just because I was too lazy to change a flat, because I wasn't good at it. I could never get the fucking thing in the tire and take it out and then fucking sink the thing. I didn't have the patience for it. That's why I love a Camaro. But who's gonna fix it? You? You gonna come over and fix my Camaro? <laughs> right. To be a car enthusiast, you gotta know what the fuck you're doing. But I do know different things. And I like different martial arts. I look at all that, for most people, most people look at a martial arts like that as a combat martial art. I don't look at it like that. I look at it as two guys, it's a chess game with your mind, but your body's in the way. And you, the, the guy who gets best is the guy that can move his body without moving his body around you. That's all jujitsu is. If you look at all the really good guys, they don't even break a sweat. Or breathe hard. Don't even <laughs> breathe hard. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're fighting them. They're <laughs> fighting nobody. They're just waiting on your moves and controlling your moves. And you know, It's so interesting. So I didn't like that I was scared of doing something. I fucking hate that shit. When I'm scared, I'm fucking pissed of something. You know, It's like when I have to go get blood. Like tomorrow. Because I got nothing on the cards really except for 10 o'clock. 
I got to go over to this fucking place and give them an allergy test. The lady told me it's one drop of blood. It's pissing me off. But I get up like a, when a Cuban and I go, I'm going down there right now. I got to bring my iPod. I can't smoke dope. And I go down there and get my allergy test. But that's the same way I felt about jujitsu being on my back because I kept getting. At the end, my sleep apnea was getting to the point that I would wake up and just run and stand up and just go. <sighs> <sighs> what the fuck was that? Like, I didn't know what it was. Like, I wasn't just waking up and looking around and going, boy, that was a that was a piece of chicken in my throat. No, I was running up out of the bed going, <sighs> in a ho- you know what it's like in a hotel room where you wake up and you don't know where you are and you can't breathe? Mm. Do you know the anxiety I used to get? And then I got help for the breathing for the sleep apnea. But towards the end of the cocaine and the sleep apnea, I started getting anxiety, Dr. Belize. And it wasn't, it was from not breathing. I would go on planes and my mind would take off and it'd go, what if? What if the plane shakes and your head hits the glass? Will you bleed? What are you going to run? Where are you going to run to? And Dr. Belize, my fucking brain mm-hmm. would take over and it wouldn't stop till I just breathe. But again, I was a mouth breather. Uh-huh. So what am I putting in my uh-huh. body? Carbon monoxide, right? Ooh, especially in an airplane? In a fucking airplane. Oh. So this is sending me into a fucking state of, and I got arrested twice and let go because I would tell them, get me off the fucking plane. Yeah. I don't want no bullshit. Get yeah. me, listen, get me off the phone, yeah. complain. I start karate chopping motherfuckers in the neck. <laughs> so then they got to talk to me and they make my wife come down and shit. And, yeah. Then they put me on pills. I got off the pills, and I just went right to reefer and acupuncture, mm-hmm. and it went away. And I mm-hmm. worked on my weight, and I dropped 100 pounds. And that took that anxiety. So I walked into jiu-jitsu, and they gave it back to me again. Mm. And there were times before I would drive to jiu-jitsu on the drive there. Oh, my God, my heart at the light would be pumping up a storm. And then as soon as I touch a dude's gi, yeah. I would have to tap just from the fear and the anxiety and the lack of oxygen. I just have to tap. I want them when you go to the doctor tomorrow to look at your CO2. Because I can tell you that one of the things is that you have too much carbon dioxide in your body. You have too much in your body. So how do you get too much carbon dioxide in your you're body? You're not getting it out. So how do you get it out? So you're learning how to exhale. Which is exactly, when, once your exhale gets better, it'll even out. So you could have a machine, but I would rather you do, you can do it yourself. It's just that exhale. Because if you have a big belly, to exhale all the way out takes a lot of effort. So you have too much, that's too much in there. I had, um, I had a, a guy, actually he was a friend on Facebook. I never really met him. But he would wake up. And he would almost be psychotic. He'd have like some PTSD stuff. He was a vet happened. And once they took him to the hospital and they looked at his CO2 and it was super high, super high. So that's what happened is that he had too much in his body. So he was, it was toxic to his body. So I can tell you because of the belly and you're going to get rid of that belly and you're going to exhale and your whole body will squeeze. So watch yourself when you cough because I just watched you cough and you (coughs) look at that. See how you cough? You cough perfectly. Which, believe me, not everybody coughs right, but that's a good cough. When you cough, your belly squeezes because it's trying to get air out of your body, right? Beautiful. That's exactly what I want you to do with the breathing, is exhale all the way out. Does that make sense, that, like, your belly's in the way of the exhale? It does make sense. So now, what do people do, like, because it's actually really crazy that you're here today. Yeah. I, I, my dad loves everything, and he, he, he was watching, and I cough a lot, and, like, every time I get a cold now, I get, like, bronchitis. Yeah. So if I if like okay if I want to explore more of this yeah how do we like who do we con- like contact you or like what, who do we <laughs> talk to me. about this <laughs> it's me <laughs> right or actually he's getting to be kind of an expert so I don't know after Saturday uh, you may have him right next to you but uh, but it's your exhale you two with your exhale let me see you cough <coughs> see how your cough's better yeah what did I do wrong yeah so go ahead cough. <coughs> A little bit, right? So I want your exhale to be really big exhale. Really big exhale. So go ahead and exhale. (coughs) Okay. And now give me an inhale and exhale. (coughs) 
Now, just regular exhale, oh, oh, no, no cough. Yeah. And exhale. See, there's nothing happening. You'll, you'll, you will teach you. Okay. But it's all up here again. And this up here, that's a stress breath and there's no lungs up there. So pretty much what Lee's doing is that on the inhale, he's picking up his shoulders and on the exhale, he's putting his shoulders down. So you're breathing with your shoulders pretty much, which means your diaphragm is sitting right there in the middle of your body doing nothing. I, yeah. al I also have a problem that everyone yells at me when I do kettlebells that I stop breathing when I'm doing the yeah. kettlebells. How do I fix that? Oh, well, you know, you know when you swing it, you, kettlebells need the breath incredibly. You can't do kettlebells and not breathe. You cannot. So pretty much the rule is exhale on effort. Whatever you're doing at the gym, when you're making an effort, when you're pushing or pulling or doing the kettlebell, the effortful part of it, you should be exhaling. And that's going to make it actually easier to lift more weight. And, and it does. And I'm trying, I, it's something I have to focus on because yep. while I'm doing it, I'll focus too much on the act of doing And I, yeah. people will be like, breathe, yep. breathe. Yep. But they should say, exhale, exhale. Because you're already in an inhale. You're kind of in a constant inhale. Right. I need you to exhale. It's a similar thing, actually. Similar. Do you think the fat shocks our body or the lungs? Well, the, the extreme weight. The, the weight, cortisol. definitely. The cortisol goes up, but your body gets toxic. So it's inflamed. And that's why you have the nose stuff going on, is that the inflammation in your body from the weight, everything catapults from there. So now you're fixing it from the bottom up. Now that you're breathing from the bottom up, your body's less acidic. Because we actually, we, we did this acidity, right? So we're going to get yours to be better and yours is better. When you breathe after class the other day, you're at 6.8. So you actually got the inside of your body to be healthier by the end of class. Your acidity changed significantly to the end of class. And that just makes a huge difference. So... I'm on a mission with you. I'm on a mission with getting a mission mess. With myself. Yeah, I know you are, which is I, why uh, I'm excited I for it. I did, like I said, I did the exercise today that was interesting that I missed. Well, I didn't remember it from the seminar was the ball on your lap and stretching your back. I did that one today. Mm -hmm. You know, I did the side, you know, uh, you know intercostal stretches, and yeah. Going down, exhaling, yeah. and back up. I did it on both sides. I did the kettlebell, like I said earlier. I love that. Uh, I did the one where it's Shinavasana, which yeah, is breathing. Yeah, the two-part breath, just, yep. Uh, I did a little bit of rock and roll, and that one's good because I'm just that works on keeping my shoulders down. Good. So I just go out. Yeah. But you did some interesting stuff where you breathe, and then you take another breath and put your shoulders back. Yeah. And then let it all out. That one yeah. I, I didn't mess with because I was catching myself doing the wrong exercise. Good. That's perfect. I That's was exactly. catching myself doing the wrong form. You yep. know exactly what I was doing. Yep. I was using my shoulders yep. up instead of sucking and then going yep. back. You know what I'm saying? So all these are from, they're, some of them are from yoga. Some of the exercises from yoga. Some are from martial arts, like pretty much the Sistema Russian special operations stuff um, and other martial arts. And some of them are from free diving and surfing. Um, so it's kind of a mix of different exercises from all different sports, including Western pulmonary health and all the all the numbers that we took in the beginning. Now, do yeah. you do the seminar across the country? Do yeah. you do schools or just all right now? All different schools, yeah. L.A. and... I New move York. all over. I move all over. I do some. I do the Department of Justice in San Diego, and I do the DEA in New York. Actually, yeah. And so, no yeah. other jiu-jitsu schools across the country. Um, like, I, I what do I have coming up? Um, I've got a couple corporations. I got some private patients. Um, now, how I've yeah. learned about you yeah. was through jiu-jitsu magazine. Yeah. So let's pretend I'm a school right now in San Antonio, Texas, and I want to bring you down for a Saturday. How would they get a hold of you? They, you know, on the website, or uh, on the website, and actually if you just put in Dr. Belisa or breathing, you'll always get a phone number or an email. So drbelisa at gmail.com, uh, D-R-B-E-L-I-S-A at gmail.com, or there's a phone number up there as well, 646-250-6390. Now, but when, I, yeah. when I went to your seminar the other day, you handed me a book that's your... A book. Yeah. You have a couple books out. I of got it. a couple, yeah. And are they all on the topic of breathing? No, they're not because um, all within psychology, I've had a million different jobs. So one of the jobs I had along the way was being the sex and health expert at Men's Fitness Magazine. So I have a couple books out there about relationships. About relationships, yeah. Not that that's one of my strengths, as you asked me before <laughs> before coming on the podcast. Were you yeah. Cuban? You're yeah. Very attractive. Yeah. I like your style. You're very warm. I was just, I, I didn't know yeah. Barnick 
was made. And I wasn't Serbian. Trying to we got Serbian. Serbian and Cuban, yeah. Okay, yeah, I yeah. wasn't trying to yeah. be disrespectful. Not at all. I want to ask you a question, yeah. very interesting question, that I've mentioned this before on the show, so I have no embarrassment here. We're talking to this family, what? and I'm sure that not too many people have asked you this. Let's get it out of the way. Breathing and sex. Good topic, great topic. I'm not trying to be horny no. here. Before I said something off color, no. I, I was talking to Lee, and I didn't mean it towards you. You know I love you and respect no. you. I said little dick, but I didn't say it as a joke. <laughs> I just said it's the okay. truth. You know, we're talking here. I consider I you like from. family. Yeah. When I meet Cuban people, yeah. um, how I, I test Cuban people is I say a couple things. Years ago, when I first got to L.A., I met this dude in, in an audition, and he was Cuban from Miami, and we spoke. And I go, listen, I do this show we're at the comedy store. Come on down. You know, I talk about my family on stage. At the end, they ran out of there. Like a month later, I called the guy, and he goes, he was never that insulted and never been so ashamed to be Cuban that he heard Union City. You know, he was a Cuban from uh, Michigan, and the, the little community was not lacking. So I've always been very... Listen, man, I went to another Cuban's house with a bunch of other Cubans, and the Cuban played mambo music, and the parents went... Buh fucking nanas. Like, and then we found out later it was for racist motives, whatever. But, you know, Cubans are fucking weird people. So, yeah. for me, with Cubans, I'm too old to, to dick around. So I push an envelope. More, more dick. And you, <laughs> you were very sweet. And uh, sex and breathing. Sex and breathing. Well, first of all, you know what? Um, I, I, you're, it, I'm not going to get. I have thick skin. And, um, and I like. I like when people are real, you know? I like when people are real. So, uh, and I had this, this sex and health background, so I was a sex expert for a while, and uh, nothing, you know, and a psychologist for a while, working well, with all kinds of people. So any weird question, I love the weird well, questions. Well, you said something very yeah. interesting, and Give let's break it out in the fucking open yeah. now. I don't want to leave the girl outside yeah. with the dog that yeah. much. It's not that it's a bad neighbor, so we'll go like 15 more minutes. But yeah. this is a very interesting question. Okay, so... Before, when I was a young kid, I was spooked into Catholic religion, you know, spooked, and you're spooked about sex and your sexuality, and you don't talk about it. And everything I learned was at the fucking bar, you know what I'm saying? And then I went to a few movies with some godfathers, with my godfather, I'd see a Ted or whatever, and I was always ashamed, I don't know. And yeah, you know, when you get to be high school, you mess around with people, you, you get breasts, you, you finger somebody, whatever. I was never, I never just even thought about sex or nothing like that. And then the summer before my mom died, I met this little dirty white chick, and we used to play around and shit. Because I used to dry hump this other girl in grammar school, and I was a good dry hump. I could dry hump for two or three hours, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I could dry hump to a whole side <laughs> of the song. Right? sex, yeah. So her and I broke up, shit evolves. <laughs> And then, no, we're fucking family here. And I guarantee other guys have these problems. And I'm telling you, you said some things that the other day I was in the bathroom reading. And I go, wait a second. She's fucking sharp. So, um, me and this girl fooled around. And listen, I don't know. Nobody knows if they're a Romeo or not. I mean, nobody left this up. Disadvantage, you know, nobody went home pissed off. You know what I'm saying? You know, wanting a refund, right? <laughs> yeah, nobody wants a refund, right? So, after my mom died, and years later, I got a steady girlfriend. I noticed that it was down to a minute, and uh -huh. I have no reason to lie to you, Doctor. But I'm mm -hmm. not trying to be funny. I mm -hmm. mean, it, my I ejaculate calm with a minute and a half. It's over, like it's over. And sometimes I'm breathing heavy, and sometimes I even get dizzy, mm -hmm. and sometimes I can't have sex in the morning mm -hmm. because I get really, like, if it's early and I get warmed up. So the other day you said that sometimes your body goes into shock and your breathing changes. I didn't notice it until I was maybe 20, you know. Now I'm 50. I can't believe I knocked my wife up because these are the reasons why. I don't break it down, but we're family here. Does breathing affect your sex? Breathing, absolutely. Tantra is based in breathing. When you think, people talk about tantric sex, tantric sex. You know, what does that mean? Tantra and breathing, it's the same thing. So think about this. In class, we talked about pelvic floor. And people kind of laugh sometimes when they think, 
why are we talking about the bottom of our body? Why are we talking about all the muscles between your legs and your thighs and your glutes and your lower abs? What does that have to do with breathing? They think breathing happens all the way up, you know, by their shoulders, top of the chest. And the fact is that your pelvic floor is involved. You can take a better breath. And this is the breathing through your balls that I talk about sometimes. So if you inhale and you relax your pelvic floor, and again, I'm going to actually go into detail. If I talk about pelvic floor, it's the 20 muscles that are on the bottom part of your body. And the, the, the very uh, specific pelvic floor is your bicycle seat. So all those muscles that hit the bicycle seat, that's your pelvic floor as well. So if you strengthen those muscles, you're going to strengthen your erection. You're going to strengthen um, being able to last longer in bed. So that's why I say when you exhale and you squeeze your lower abs and you squeeze your whole body, go ahead and squeeze your pelvic floor too. And by squeeze, I mean... This is what you can try. Stopping the stream of urine midstream. That's using some of your pelvic floor muscles, most of them, not all of them. Or if you're trying not to pass gas and you squeeze, those are kind of your pelvic floor muscles as well. It's not all your glutes. If you're squeezing your glutes, that's not your pelvic floor. But if you work out those muscles by squeezing on the exhale, which is breathing through your balls, everything that has to do with sex is gonna get better for men and for women. So you're doing Kegels pretty much. Yeah. So the takeaway with that is on the inhale, relax your pelvic floor, relax your hips, relax your butt. Okay, that's a reverse Kegel. On the exhale, squeeze your belly, squeeze your body, and actually squeeze the muscles on the bottom part of your body, the ones that hit the bicycle seat. So you squeeze those and you let them go and you do that often when you breathe, letting go and squeezing and letting go. And you're going to have a better erection if you're a man. You're going to be able to uh, stay hard longer. And for a woman, you're also going to be able to have better orgasms. Yeah. Crazy but true, right? And you're oxygenating and all those other things. It's a really good multitask. <laughs> right now, everybody's squeezing right now, I can tell. I can tell. I'm looking at you I guys. Ari, it, Ari's I'm going like squeezing and letting yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's just really weird to put all the pieces together. Yeah. That's the problem I've been having the last yeah. few days. Not really. It's when my mind goes away and I start and then I go, what the fuck am I doing? I'm <laughs> I'm breathing out, but my stomach's going the wrong fucking yeah. direction. But I do notice one thing, and I'm a very honest person. I do notice that on all my exhales, my stomach can't go all the way in because of the amount of fat. Now, where is your diaphragm exactly. under here? Okay, so diaphragm, let's do this. So you put your fingers up by your sternum, that little notch right there, all right? And then you walk them around, and everybody should do this. Go ahead and walk them around that front rib and see if you can stick your fingers underneath that front rib and kind of give it a little tug. Yeah, okay, so tug it out a little bit. Now, your ribs are attached to your sternum like handles on a pail, and they should come out horizontally when you inhale. And they should squeeze together and your body should get narrower on the exhale. Keep your fingers going around that rib, around the side. You're going to hit that floating rib. Once you get to the side, keep going. Now, if you get your fingers and have them go all the way to your back. That's what I was talking yeah. Joey. My shoulders are locked <laughs> Okay, but imagine them going all the way to your back. So your diaphragm is attached all the way around that bottom rib. It's a huge muscle the size of a, you know, medium-sized pizza right in the middle of your body, and it's the enterprise. That's a really important muscle to have. It's smack in the middle of your body. And Lee, for instance, here is not using his diaphragm because he doesn't know how to yet. He's using his shoulder still. But right now, when you inhale and you let your body relax and expand, and you exhale and you squeeze it, that's you using your diaphragm. So you're doing it. Mm. Good stuff. Oh. <laughs> mayday, mayday, mayday. You're coming to get me. <laughs> this is very. The, the seminar I left there, first off, the next day I woke up and my head felt different. Mm. My head felt. I don't drink, I don't smoke, you know, I smoke a few numbers, but my head felt different. Like something different had happened. And then the next day I felt my back because the next day I went at it pretty hard and I reread. Mm -hmm the beginning and I made some notes and I did some of the exercise and I remembered a few things and I remember one of the exercises I could see that my shoulders were moving too much so I stopped doing the exercise until next week when I go to now what's the difference mm -hmm. between two and warrior 
I gotta yeah. actually remind you that you also you you also had a nice poop, right? Because yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the clinical word. That's the clinical word for that. Hey, you know, given how constipated we all are as a country, you gotta celebrate a good poop when you have one, right? So the breathing yeah. even helps to poop. Absolutely. Well, it helps the digestion. It helps the digestion, so everything gets better. Because think about this. Actually, Lee's thinking, what is hell? What is that? Is that if your diaphragm's pushing down on your be- on your organs, right. they're all getting a massage. So if you have acid reflux, it's going to help with that constipation, irritable bowel. But if you breathe with your shoulders, nada, nothing. So that's why you got to learn to breathe with the middle part of your body. But uh, okay, so the advanced, you can't go straight to the advanced without taking the beginning class. It's just you have all that information has to sink in. But the advanced, we actually, when it's a jujitsu class, is that we do different types of breathing in your body. So we do a lateral breath, we do a back breath, we do a lower body breath, an upper body breath, but in different positions. Because jujitsu is super interesting in that you are always in a compromised position, pretty much. In any other sport, you're in an uncomfortable position sometimes. But in jiu-jitsu, you're always going to be in a position that's awkward. It's just the nature of the sport. I'm so fat that there's times I'm on top of you and I can't fucking breathe. (laughs) That's when you know you're a fat fuck. When When I'm on top of you in side control (laughs) and I'm having a fucking hard time breathing and I ain't even moving, I'm holding on to you like you're a fucking rope. And there's an earthquake. You understand me? I ain't going nowhere. I'm holding on to your neck. If the earth t- tips over, you know, I'm taking it. It's I'm amazing that they told me, you know, when you pass the guard, breathe and catch your breath. And sometimes because, you know, you get caught up or they're holding your gi, you know, when they hold your gi and you can't move. And, you know, in my world, I know just to keep breathing. You just keep breathing, you know, just keep breathing, keep breathing. But once you pass the guard, you, I would lay down on them just to catch my breath, and sometimes it was worse. Well, one thing is that if you're breathing in a dysfunctional way, if you're breathing using your shoulders, that's a teeny tiny breath. So if you're prone to take a teeny tiny breath when you have friction of the other person or the mat on you, it's not going to work. So that lower body breath is a much more efficient breath. That's why I like working with athletes is that you take a breath through the lower part of your body using your diaphragm, that's worth six breaths on top. So you want to be able to breathe efficiently when you only have a couple seconds to catch your breath. So, you know, in the, like you asked, in the advanced class, we take all the exercises we did in the first class and then we make them a lot harder so that they really become challenging. So we do them in inversions. We do all those breaths that we did upside down. So that's what we got coming up on uh, on Saturday, is that we're doing them upside down. We're doing them in all different positions, and then we upside do a lot down. of yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I hope you got some fucking sumo wrestlers there. To we pick got me some. Up. I'll, I'll bring some to class. Holy we do shit. them in different ways, and then we talk specifically about fighting. So, um, center of gravity. You know, you want to breathe in a way that lowers your center of gravity. You want to breathe in a way that helps you tolerate pain. Um, smothering so we get a little bit more specific which is nice which is nice if it's just jujitsu then we just talk about jujitsu with which is nice if it's people from all different fighting backgrounds then you can use examples from all different fighting backgrounds but um you know like we started talking about is that if you're stacked or neon you can't breathe well how are you going to breathe when you are in those two positions that are really difficult to breathe in and that's you know some of the things that we do i love talking about fighting and breathing i can do it all day so A lot of times, like, did you see that Sage Northcutt fight a few months ago where he he tapped, but it wasn't really in? But he said later on he had, like, a flu and couldn't breathe. So do you do you work with fighters that then, like, change their entire careers if they're not, like, gassing out all the time? You know what? I haven't – I you know, if, if I had – the first fighter I had was a brown belt, Gracie brown belt, and he had plateaued. And he would gas while he was fighting, and he would also get very nervous – so he came to me because he wanted to get his black belt. And he did. He worked like a fiend and he got his black belt because those were the two things that were holding him back. And thankfully those were the his technique was amazing. He was super talented, but you know, he would run out of energy and he would get nervous. So that's perfect. For breathing, I got him over those two things. Now how about nerves? Aha. Uh-huh. Well if you're breathing upper body breath <sighs> Are you talking about nerves while you're fighting or before? Listen, fighting and comedy before you go on stage, it's the exact same fear. 
Okay, you know, I tell people all the time that I wear long shirts. I wear long shirts because I hate traveling with underwear. I'd rather smuggle on weed or something more important than five pair of my underwear. You know, five pair of my underwear can feed a fucking village. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So sometimes on a Saturday you, you work out, you jump in a pool and you forget to put underwear, and you forget to take your underwear off before you jump in the pool sometimes. So I actually had my underwear counted for four days. So Saturday on stage, I have to go on stage. And sometimes I pee my pants from the anxiety before mm -hmm. I go on stage. And it's the same fear for that one minute and a half. I talk, and it makes you a good fighter or a comedian or a good jujitsu guy. That's what we don't, we have to just use it. Yeah. It's very weird. And I know how to do it in stand up. Yeah. I'm the master. I force myself to, once I hit that foot, my goal is to touch that mic as quick as I can. So whatever fear I have in my stomach, I've already learned how to get it out through the microphone. It goes out. Their laughter comes back in and feeds me. And we got a tennis match going. Mm. Now we got an energy tennis match going. I haven't figured out how to transform that into jujitsu kettlebells. Now, with weights, I could, in my mind, take the rack off, exhale, correct? Mm -hmm. Inhale, exhale. Exhale on the way up. Inhale, exhale. I know this going in. Now, when I'm walking on the treadmill from a Sistema guy that we had on the show, the problem was the heat in the room at the other place messed up the tape and i'm going to call him and get it on i get get him back on the podcast he spoke about because there's a jiu-jitsu school in hollywood in uh, beverly hills and they have a sistema school it's a sistema jiu-jitsu school it's a higan machado mm. and uh, i forget what it, he's a great guy this guy <clears throat> no you know i smoke too much pot but one time him and i was speaking and he goes this is what i want you to do just go for a walk in the park and I want you to start with two steps. I want you to exhale on two, inhale on two. Exhale on two, then go to three, then four, then five, then six. And he was telling me what he could do, and my mind almost fucking blew up. So when you men mentioned Sistema in your system, you know, whatever, whether it's a couple of warm-ups, what I'm going to do now is the next fucking eight months, I'm going to do all these warm-up exercises as part of my warm-up for either kettlebells or jiu-jitsu or lifting. I'm going to do the side stretches, the breathing, the weights. I'm going to put a fucking tank on my fucking stomach. You understand me? I'm going to put Lee. I want Lee to put his head in my stomach and lift his feet up like a somersault. We're going to be podcast de soleil, you and I. You understand me? I'll do it. But, I will pay to see that. Um, because I know the breathing exercises already help me and jujitsu today a little bit. Not yeah. that I submitted anybody or anything, but I had more energy. Yes. I moved a little bit more, and I focused on the exhale. Beautiful. I focused on the exhale all the way to the end, and it, it did lower a little bit of the anxiety. Good. It, sh it should, because neurologically, it puts you in a lower state of anxiety. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Your nervous system, and we talked about this in classes, your nervous system hears be in fight and flight when you breathe with your shoulders. So you can't be anything but anxious when you breathe with an upper body breath. So when I'm working with, uh, you know, I actually had a particular SWAT guy who was, uh, he was having panic attacks in the truck. And uh, I had to teach him how to breathe with a lower body breath and then talk to himself to pull himself down, to calm himself down. So it's that lower body breath so that that makes you feel better, your neurological system, then you can talk to yourself. But you can't talk to yourself and still be telling your body neurologically to be calmed down because it's not going to listen. Even as uh, you ever see The Godfather? Mm -hmm. Before he goes to shoot Salazzo at the restaurant, you know, that's why he's such a great director. The guy, I forget what his name is, Francis Coppola. Coppola. He, he, you hear a train stopping. Now, you're a sweetheart of a human being. I'm telling you this from experience. Before you do something bad to that level, and, and I did a lot of things in that level, your body, unless you're a fucking psychopath, which I think it doesn't happen to psychopath, but it happened to me. I know whenever I would do something bad, the adrenaline rush combined with mm -hmm. your breath gets taken away. It's like if I knew, for example, right now, that 
Lee and you had $20,000 in cash here and a kilo of blow. And my friend dropped me off on the corner by the cemetery there. By the time he dropped me off, by the time I crossed the street, I would be breathing so hard, just thinking about it, telling you the story. My breath has uh, risen, just thinking about it, because I know what I have to do. I gotta kick that fucking gate down like Zombo. I either gotta kick that door down, or shoot it, or well, or jump up here, and get, you know, the only out here, where the fuck are you guys gonna go? You have to jump off the balcony and get around the building. So by the time I jump up here, I got a gun to the door. It's over. I got to get through here, get the gun. You know what's going through my fucking head? And I used to control that. Don't ask me how I did that. I didn't, there was no book named fucking Breathe. <laughs> Not in back 1982, then, no. there was no. no book named fucking Breathe. <laughs> it was, when I get in the car, it was like I had just run 22 miles. Like you felt that worn out, that that had that much adrenaline and shit. Now, in hindsight, I know this from 30 years' experience, but 20 years ago, I didn't know this stupidity. How that short period of time, oh, Lee's starting to make noises. That means he's really fucking high. And once he starts to make noises. <laughs> I was his, wondering with that little purring noise. Did you hear were, that? Did you I hear that? I love little purring noises over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he gets too fucking high and he starts praying for his soul. You can hear him, please, please, Jesus, help me. Please, Jesus, help me. So it was really Adrenaline. weird. Yeah. You control that. Yeah. And that's what was happening to me in jujitsu. And every time I go to jujitsu, I go for two more things to last a little longer on top and yeah. breathe yeah. or to complete something. Like the other day, I completed a sweep when I was really tired and I tapped. The guy's like, Come on, you had me. I go, I'm done. I'm good. I did two rounds in this, whatever. Mm-hmm. I swept you. And uh, I like when I, uh, when somebody's on top of me and I last a little longer. Good. Because my anxiety levels. I learned how to create a frame, stay there, hold them down until I get them. Hopefully if they pull away, I try to escape. Yeah. You know, I've learned all these little things which has given me more confidence. Mm-hmm. So uh, these are the little things I work on for my breathing, just so my breathing gets better. I love that. And because you've learned in a way, I teach in a quantifiable way. And that's what I like. You've got this number, and you're going to get to this number, and then you're going to get to this number. So it's all about these little steps, or big ones, because I could see you taking big ones. But it's all about steps to get bigger. And, uh, and you're doing them. You already automatically go to, I'm at 30 seconds, I want 45 I'm at a minute. I want two minutes. Well, the breath hold yeah. is still a little difficult. For Don't me. worry about the breath hold. The first breath time, I still get stuck. Yeah. And the second time, I have to look away. Yeah. I have to look away and focus and not have the clock around me. And I've been hitting like 34, 32. That's fine. I don't want you practicing the breath holds. They're not that big of a deal. I, more than anything, I want you breathing through your nose. Because you know that the nose breathing is super important. We're going to get your nose better. You know, one of my yeah. biggest fears, the breath, is... There's an earthquake, something, and I gotta run with my daughter. And she's 40 pounds, and all I could do is run a half a fucking block, and Godzilla's behind me with 22 Japanese guys and a fucking drum. So every morning when I walk her to school, I try to last a little longer, and I pick her up, and I just walk with her, and I just focus on my breathing. I don't focus on how heavy she is, or how pretty she is, or how nice her hair looks. I focus on my breathing, you know, my exhale, my exhales. I've been working on it because it Good. fucking petrifies Good. me. No, you got it, and because we're putting you upside down on Saturday, so. It's upside down? <laughs> How? Can you please take a picture of it? I will take a picture. Um, do I get I to hold myself? No, I'm not going to even tell you because, okay. yeah, yeah, it's going to be a surprise. But, you know, you brought something up that's important, which is the endurance in sports. If you can get your breathing muscles to be stronger then you don't gas, you know, then you don't have this feeling of not being able to, of losing motivation, of losing focus. So those breathing muscles, I mean, yeah, we're getting you to breathe the right way through the right orifice, but a lot of it is strengthening your muscles. It's not, you know, it's not brain surgery. It's making sure your intercostals, your obliques, your abs, your pelvic floor, your diaphragm are all working just like any other muscle you want to be stronger, period. So that's the little sore in the morning that you get, which is good. I want you to be sore. I want you to have that feeling of why am I, my middle of my body is sore. That's weird. Or I'm breathing in my back. I feel it in my back. That's wild. Well, yeah. Sunday, 
The seminar was Saturday and Sunday and Monday. Nothing happened with my back, only something in class when you made the stretches a certain way. Mm -hmm. But Tuesday I was walking Mercy to school and I was focusing on my breathing. I didn't, I didn't fucking get my wife started in no conversation. <laughs> I just walked three feet ahead of her, making believe I was thinking about something. And I really focused on my breathing. And at the light, I could when I had to stop, I could feel my back moving around my little fat. And I was like, okay, we're getting somewhere. Good. I'm bringing that to life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're getting somewhere. Good. So. And you used to breathe that way. I mean, one of the reasons why it's not that hard, or it makes sense anyway, is because you used to breathe this way when you were little. It was a long time ago, but... You used to breathe this way. And now I can make my body remember. Your body can remember. By over-exaggerating yeah. the movements. Yeah, because it's kind of testing you to see, are you going to let me breathe this way? Because it wants to, your body, the only reason God put the diaphragm in the very middle of your body, that huge muscle, very center of your body, right below your heart, so you could breathe with it, right? And you haven't been at all. And now it's sort of going, can I use, can I work? Are you going to let me do this for real? So it's sort of seeing if you're okay and you're really going to use it or you're going to go back to shoulder breathing and make it not do anything again so yeah it's just your body checking you to see like are you really are we really going to work together now because when you breathe with your diaphragm when you read the right way your whole body is working together and you should get some kind of a feeling of that of like i feel like my whole body is inhaling and exhaling i feel like i feel more unified in some way maybe not right away but see if it comes to you you're a bad motherfucker. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we'll get some like shout that. outs in and we'll ask yeah. you some more questions. We'll get you out of here. My main man, James Wilson, always emailing me little jujitsu drills. He sent me a kettlebell workout. This is what's good about this health thing. Everybody kicks in a little bit. My man, Alex Costino and shit. Dak Z, not Rob G, the octopus. Fire goddess Bet, Paul Savage, Sean Scooter. Brandon Lee, no, Brandy Lee, my girl from Minneapolis, and my main man, and his dad, Bob Lalingus. What are you fucking nuts, so what? So, you do the uh, Breathing for Warriors 2 this Saturday. Now, when you go to New York, is there a Breathing for Warriors 1? Yes, we have uh, Breathing for Warriors 1 is end of May. I don't even know my own schedule. End of May. And then we've got a teacher training, which is uh, going to be either the end of May or the beginning of June, which is exciting because I've had, and actually that was not my idea. I've had so many people who train or who are physical therapists say, can I learn this? How do I learn this? I want to be able to teach this to my clients, my patients. So the teacher training is going to be fun. And I love teaching. I mean, you give me a group of people that are interested in anatomy and psychology and you know, I'm in heaven. <laughs> well, it's it's weird because enthusiasm breeds enthusiasm, and uh, I'm not a big fucking seminar guy. I wouldn't make this was very important to me because I almost quit doing jujitsu because of this. Because every time I was going to jujitsu, you know, I thought I was going to die of a heart attack. But I kept going more and more, and just working on my breathing, working on my breathing. If it was one more hip escape, don't worry about it. As long as you breathe yourself out of there. So this was a big decision of whether or not I was going to quit jujitsu. And I've heard horror stories. Like one, there's a guy at Hegan Machado's that rolled one day. On the, he left class. He said on the way home, his left arm started hurting. His wife told him to drive himself to the hospital. They did a double bypass. They put balloons in his leg and shit. And he's back doing jujitsu. <laughs> you know, <laughs> good for him. You've got to love the valor. But I don't want to be, you know what I'm saying? So I, I'm trying to be careful. I know the one answer is like I just got to drop 100 fucking pounds. Mm. But that's easier said than done. And I got to tell you, when I first attacked this diet thing, it had to be when I was about 45 or 46 when I cleaned up. And it's become double hard again, uh, burning calorie-wise. Because I walk a lot now. I force myself to walk. I walk to the weed store now. I walk the baby to school, you know, if I have a chance to walk, I walk to the office, you know, and so let's just work everything. And I could tell there's no ice cream in my house. My wife gets fucking ice cream from time, but she gets it from the, the Mexican ice cream man. He shows up at 6.30, 
the little cones are delicious. But besides that, I'm not like a sweet guy and like that. If I eat marijuana, when you eat marijuana, it's a tough fucking devil to fucking beat. When I smoke marijuana, I don't even need to eat. It's eating marijuana that if I stay up past 1140, the refrigerator's done. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, I've dropped the weight. I know I burned off secondary calories. I avoid chips. I try to avoid french fries. Only when this fucking demon over here takes me to a place called Stout. <laughs> I'm a these, horrible influence. They got I apologize. They got onion rings with horseradish, you know. Oh, my God. You just find they're thick and... The burgers are delicious, and I'm not even a cheeseburger dude. So, and they're open late, which is great. Open late and yeah. shit. So I'm a I'm a burger without the bun type of dude at the house. I love a little burger without the bun and the protein shakes and the drinks. You're trying to get me to like I said, I drank I tried that green drink with a lot of apples. <laughs> oh my god! Have to put grapes in next time if you if you. Oh that's my what god. I used she to put, put everything in. sugar. Gazelta mm. fish. Gazelta. Let me tell you something. This fucking thing tasted so bad. I can't do it and, anymore. And I, it's like I told my I wife. Know. I go, you know, people have to understand that when you're 20, you still listen. I, I, I didn't eat sushi until I was 26, and I fucking love sushi today. But they caught me early. <laughs> I knew at fucking nine that cauliflower wasn't for me. I knew at nine <laughs> that broccoli was not for me. There is no better dish Looking wise, eyeball, mm -hmm. then broccoli with cheese on top. Especially when you smoke ten fucking joints and you're a hungry kid, nothing looks better. None of that shit has ever appealed to me. Tofu, I wouldn't eat fucking tofu if that was the only food left on earth. I'd rather starve. I'd rather rake up in Africa with that kiwi mosquito biting me or some <laughs> shit like that. Then eat that fucking tub. Look, look at the shape of this fucking zombo, huh? You'd rather wake up in Africa. <laughs> then fucking eat that just tofu shit. I mean, you know, I'm That's done. That's a little bit extreme, Joey. The dog, I'm telling you right now, I take it out of my hot and sour soup, okay? I don't fuck around. I don't even, I don't even put my, I don't even taste hot and sour soup until all the tofu was out of there. Why? What is it going to do to you? Because it just, it destroys me. The texture would fucking kill me. <laughs> the texture kills me. All that shit kills me. If I would have liked it, I would have liked it a long time ago. Trust me, there's not. I'm a fat fuck. There's not that many foods out there that I would but it's like. But soup, it like goes down in like two seconds. No, no, you don't no, no. Have Listen, to chew I don't even want tofu on my table. You understand me? But I like hot and sour soup. But I have a job to take it out of there myself. So that's what I do. There's certain things I can't eat, Doctor Belize. I just can't do. And I've tried. Just I'm, breathe. Just you know breathe. what I ate today? We'll what spinach. Oh, like I could eat yeah, spinach, yeah. but it's got to be made a certain way. How? It's got to be doped up, heavy duty, garlic, fresh garlic, cut it thin, a little butter, and then throw the spinach in there, mix it up nice. All right. Da 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 da. You get some black bean rubbish with some uh, some whatever. I went to listen, man. I went yeah. to my today. I had a meeting at three, and the people wanted to take me to eat lunch first. I said, all right, let's go eat lunch. I put a suit on. They took me to a nice place. White people. I went in there, and I got everybody was eating steaks like cannibals. What do you think I ate? I had a nice piece of salmon with a re, uh, a bean hash with spinach. Mm. I didn't touch the bread, and I had the fucking oh. and I had the chopped spinach with anchovies. Cause <laughs> what'd you drink? Water and iced tea. Beautiful, and you didn't touch the bread basket. A no. plus. A Come plus. On, dog. Yeah. Yeah. What do you you're think good. you're dealing with? Some you're fucking good. novice here. I'm no. trying to pick up the heat here. Yeah. And it's tough. I did take a spoonful out of the chocolate mousse. I know. That's I okay. No. You, you know need a spoonful. The whipped cream. Yeah. I you had need, no, that. no, that's okay. I went to jujitsu from crazy. 11 to 12 today. You can have that. You deserve a little fucking. Yeah. Eat bread. the flan. Eat the flan. No, I won't eat the flan. I know, I know. No, it's from that movie. Remember Eat the Flan? What movie? Uh, Real Women Have Curves. I don't remember yeah, that. Yeah, you got to see that with America. Well, let me oh. tell you something. If you eat fucking flans, you have a lot of fucking curves. Mm -hmm. There's two flans you can eat, flan. okay? There's the flan you can eat at your fucking friend's restaurant. That's tremendous. You you have an espresso and everybody giggles. Somebody might go home and, sm and fart one of those almond farts from the flan. <laughs> or you go to a real Cuban's house where they make it with condensed milk. Yep. And it weighs... 42 fucking pounds for a tray. It's like a lasagna. And you're like, this is supposed to be a dessert. And you can't figure out why until you eat it. And you sit there. And your body composition changes. <laughs> I want to see you lick one of those fucking things after you eat a piece of yep. flan whip thing. It's black. It turns black. My mom does not cook. But she makes flan. Flan. They fucking love. 
Cubans will make a flan that'll mm. kill you with the egg yolks. I mean, everything. Coke, sometimes with co- that's how I, I like. With, I like the coconut, but that'll kill you. Heavy. The, it's heavy too. You'll get a piece of. Flan, it's really heavy. It's, like, it's too heavy. There's like two. It's two pounds for a slice of. <laughs> yeah. And because it's at Portos, I don't know if it's Cuban though. But tres leches is that Cuban or no? Is that Mexican? I don't. I think know. that's more Mexican. Okay, Mexican. but that, that's crazy too. Like, yeah. just Cubans have milk. a great dessert that I loved. And my mother loved, and I gotta tell you, it was probably, I, I hate to say this, God, but uh, it was probably what well, contributed factors to her heart attack. There's a dish called natilla, and it's a custard, but it's poured over Entenmann's pound cake. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> With cinnamon. And you uh. put it in the freezer, and it gets hard. Then you pull it out and you eat it while you're watching the honeymooners. Oh my God, that sounds amazing. And that's the end of the fucking show yeah. right there. You understand me? That's how good that is. And there's one place that makes it just like my oh. mother. With that. And I'm not, I'm not, I wouldn't even tell nobody this. I'm telling you motherfuckers because my girl's here. What do you live in New York? Uh, I'm on the uh, Upper West Side. You have Cuban food not by you? Mm, no more. I got to go up a little further. You got to go up by you. Yeah. But a couple blocks yeah. from you, you got a... Uh, Garida. I got Garida on Right. On How's the dessert in there? It's okay. It's not like, you know, it's not very... Uh, it's I not like cafe con leche. And down where on do you go 16th. For- so you gotta 16th, go over to 16th, and, 16th and 8th Avenue. That's they're from, but cafe. they're yeah, they're Puerto Rican. They're from uh, Cabo Rojo. No, I think, no, yeah. no, Victor's Cafe on oh, the Upper Victor, West Side. No. Uh, you know, there's not. There's a uh, uh, como se llama this place? It is. It's up on a hundred and thirty six. That's you just have to go uptown. Not in my immediate neighborhood. We just got a lot of bagels. We got bagels and locks. Shit, yeah. that's as lot. good as it gets <laughs> in my motherfucking world. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Stop it. Uh, Dr. Belis, uh, thank you very much for coming thank on. Thank you for having me. I just me. want people to know, you know, a lot of people who, who go to jiu-jitsu or black, I mean, I, people always hit me up. Like, it's like James Wilson. He sends me exercises. He sent me something called the the goat bag blaster for cardio. You get a kettlebell, I tell him Lee, and you pick it up. What's that called when you hold it right here and you do a squat? Um, yep. Yeah, yeah. Coogler or, or whatever the fuck it is. Goblet squat. Goblet, Goblet squat. squat. Oh, you I do, love those. You do five of those and then you turn it over and you, yep. listen to this, you put this in your diaphragm, the mm-hmm. bottom of the ball, mm-hmm. and you spread your legs just a little mm-hmm. bit. No, no, still okay. shoulder. Yeah. And you bend over instead of doing swings oh, and nice. strengthen your back that way yep. to, help with your, that. to help with your uh, hip escapes. It it does something to your hip joints. It mm-hmm. makes them a little stronger. Mm-hmm. I did that's the work I did the other day. I, mm-hmm. I do some Turkish get-ups with my shoe because oh, my shoulder's kind of loose. Yeah, I'll do some cleans. I'll do some one-arch swings and some squats, and that's the end of that. Uh, she does a, a yoga class for jujitsu, specifically yoga for jujitsu. Where Erin at? Erin does it at Dynamics here in LA. Does she really? Yeah, oh, yeah. I thought she did. Something at Ten Planet. Yeah, I think she. I mean, she might do the class there as well. Right. Yeah, I'll pull her in here and ask. But it's a yoga for jujitsu class. Okay, Good now stuff. That we know, and they yeah. could go to Dynamics. Yeah. And that's Anthony Hart. Yeah. Yep. Why yep. Was that's that his there? place. That's a mm-hmm. great place. Great place. And I'll be back there with you Saturday. Yeah. Thank you very much for Thank coming. Thank you, on. It was you a guys. Pleasure. Just to know that our acidic level was okay yeah. after eating a piece of Cuban food. See? Your acidic level was perfect. Now. And I'm I mean, proud this isn't. You. you know, man, this isn't one of our typical podcasts. But I thought you were so interesting and so oh, man, open thank up. You. Uh, can you tell us more about your book real quick? Uh, yeah, it's called Breathe. I mean, and and anybody who emails me and says I heard about you from the podcast, I will send you a book. So just write to me, give me your address, I'll send you a book. Um, it gives you the basics that we learn in class. It's not as good as class, of course, but it'll definitely give you the basics. And um, I'm teaching all over the place. And if you want me to come teach wherever you live, it's just about setting up setting up a class and I'll come over. And not a problem. go back to New York... Mm. And when you look at your apartment, okay. because I think you're as interesting as fuck, and I think that you should alert more people of this thing you're doing, because I tell you, man, listen, Leonard Skinner's got a book out. I read four pages a day. I've been reading the book for two fucking months. I read four or five <laughs> pages a day. Not because I don't like Leonard Skinner, because I got a lot on my plate. I've read your book three days in a row, like ten pages. Ah, good. So there's something in there, especially yeah. for me, because this is a big fear of mine, man. So yep. thank you for, uh, you know, telling me about your seminar and for staying on top of me. And I'm going back sun- Saturday to get fucking part two of Warriors. Yeah. And even if I get five seconds more cardio and I get to just keep working on it. Yep. Do you want me to do it in the beginning and after class or just the beginning of class I want as you a warm-up? 
often as possible. Right now, like right now when your body's learning this, if you can do it twice a day and then every single time, because I see you, you're reminding yourself, you're sitting here and every once in a while you'll you'll do an exercise or two, which is perfect. Because right now your body's kind of open to, uh, you know, learn something new. So as often as possible right now, because the more you do it, uh, the more it's going to sink in and you're going to click over and it's going to become natural. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. And let me talk to you about something, you savages here, real quick. Don't forget, as usual, on it, they're my people. They take care of us. I just brought in some, uh, where is it at, over there? I don't know. Who cares? It's some, uh, <laughs> it's some, uh, uh, good stuff. what is some it called? Good stuff. Alpha Brain. Alpha Brain, the instant mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, I got some sent to me, tremendous, if you do a lot of flying. And you get that jet lag at the end, as usual. You know me. You got me with shroom tech. That's as good as it gets in my world. You get a little bit more endurance. You know, when you leave there, sometimes you think you're winded, but you're really not. You just left because you thought it was time to leave. And that's what shroom tech sport does. You have shroom tech immune again if you fly. And you get people breathing in your fucking neck. And then you go home and you cough. What good is it? So you need some shroom tech uh, immune. On it has a great selection of all different stuff. Do me a favor, go to onnit.com, take a look at what they got from the MCT oil to the to the shroom tech to the what else? The, 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 to the, the testosterone brain, booster, the testosterone booster, the Alpha Brain with 100 percent money back the guarantee. On it, the uh, Dolce Whey protein, the, the banana Dolce Whey protein, which you're almost fucking done with already. Mm-hmm. It's delicious. He said it was delicious. Almond. Listen, just go to onnit.com, put everything in a cart. Press in. Church. C-H-U-R-C-H. And get 10% off. 10% off the top right off, and it gets delivered to your goddamn door. Who's better than you, huh? You don't have to leave the fucking house. You get Chinese delivered. You get on it delivered. What else? Also, this is one of my favorites. I've gotten some great little reviews on this. You know, you got smart cars, smartphones, smart homes. Technology has made everything smart. But losing your stuff still makes smart people feel really stupid. Tracker makes losing things a thing of the past. Tracker is a coin-sized device that locates misplaced keys, wallets, bags, computers, anything in seconds. Just pair Tracker to the smartphone, attach it to anything, and find its precise, I mean precise location with a tap of a button. It's that easy. Boom! Lose your phone, press the button on Tracker, and your phone rings even if it's on silent. With over 1.5 million devices, Tracker has the largest crowd GPS network in the world, so your lost items show up on a map, even if it's miles away. Never lose anything again with Tracker. Listeners of this show get a special discount of 30% off your entire order. Again, 30% off your entire order. Go to the t t h e tracker dot com and enter promo code church bitches again <laughs> the t h e tracker dot com and enter promo code church. The hardest thing you'll ever have to find is their website. Go to tracker dot com right now and the enter tracker dot com. Go to the tracker dot com. Go to the La, 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 la. Go, <laughs> go to thetracker.com right now and enter promo code CHURCH for 30% off your entire order. Again, that's thetracker.com, promo code CHURCH. I want to thank Tracker. I want to thank Onnit. I want to thank Dr. Belise. I want to thank my main man, Lee Sayat. I want to thank Staff One. I want to thank everybody for being nice people, for listening to the show tonight. And have a good weekend. We'll be back Monday, ready to fucking rock and roll. Don't forget, next Thursday night, I'm in Buffalo, motherfucking New York. Straight up at Helium Comedy Club. Next Thursday night, and the week after that, I'm in Indianapolis, Dr. Belize. If you want to stop by, we'll do some fucking breathing exercises in Indianapolis. You know what I'm saying? And that's it. What are you doing this weekend, Tarzan? Mama coming over? Uh, Yeah, she's oh, coming she's over this weekend. For the bar. Last week, she's not going to be home. Oh, I don't know. All of a sudden, I call him Saturday night, and he's that fucked up. What's the matter, Lee? Oh, we need four stars together. And he was all panicking. She's probably I naked. I wasn't panicking. You still not wearing the robe? 
She wears. Then she wears it. What the yeah. fuck is wrong with you? Still walking around with your physique with long boxer shorts on and shit. When you wear the robe, you know what it does? I get too hot when I wear the robe. Forget that. It makes you fucking mysterious. They don't know what you're packing under there when you got that she robe. Know, it's been three years. Who she knows exactly fuck? what I'm packing. But you got to show up with different costumes. <laughs> Friday night, you're a bull rider. Saturday, you're a fucking exorcism. And they all wear robes? No, you wear different <laughs> outfits. She thinks it's a different person. You talk in different languages. You got to keep it interesting. You're at that three-year mark. If not, it goes sour. I don't even have a book. I don't even have a relationship on books. This is my new, this is my new venture. You gotta okay. Get, you got to get a cape and like a Tarzan mask. For how, like how many? Do you have, can I rotate them? No, you got to wear the same thing every night. No, dummy, you got to rotate them. No, too. but like, okay, so every like. Every week you're a fucking surprise. Right. All right, but like, let's say I'm a uh, cowboy, right? Right. Do I have an ongoing story? Like three months down the road, do I like come back and like. Listen, you know what? Whatever your imagination lets loose. Whatever makes Paula happy. If she wants it to be an ongoing story, like you come to town every three months. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Smack her around, throw it through the kitchen table, and then make love <laughs> to her and leave. That works. Then you come back at like a doctor, you hem and heal her, tell her you love her, sing her a song, turn around, every now and then I feel a little, and then you fucking leave and you come back as Charles Bronson and you leave money on that counter. Take it! I'm not a whore! You know what I'm saying? You gotta play. I don't know. I don't do that shit. You know me. I'm a, I'm a Latin lover. I come okay, so what it. costumes were, your, were in your rotation? I only had one, dog, a cape. No, you didn't. Yeah, with, with work boots on, balls ass naked. That's how I roll. When what I was in my head, the black. With that's what underneath? With nothing but skin and work boots on. <gasps> when you show up with a cape with work boots and a grandma blow, you're running a fucking game. You know what I'm saying? Did you tie it together and, like, run? Did I what? Did you, like, run around with a cape? I would do a little dance. You know how I do. You just don't show up with your dick in your hand. You got to have a little cape and do a little dance. Women like to dance. That's how you hypnotize them. Gotta use your fucking brain, Lee. We'll talk about this off air. We'll be back Monday, 8 o'clock, and next Wednesday. I love you guys with all my heart. Buffalo, get your shit together again. I'd like to thank Dr. Belisa. Is there a website? DrBelisa.com or DrBelisa.com or TheBreathingClass.com. You're beautiful. Lee, you got a website? I do, LeeSyatt.com, and I just did a great episode of Life in Neutral with Johnny Rock. Who so told you it was great? Did somebody read it? Did yeah. the New York Times contact you, cocksucker? Sure. Don't be lying and shit. The, what is it? Uh, no, he's got a good show, Lee Syatt. Lee Syatt and this kid, I've known him for a long the time. Onion. They work really hard. The Onion. Yeah, All so right. is the joke. <laughs> Stay black. This show is brought to you by Tracker. Never lose anything again with Tracker. Listen to... Oh, Jesus. Never lose nothing. Go to the tracker doc. Listeners to this show get a special thirty percent discount off their entire order. Go to the tracker dot com, t h e tracker dot com, enter promo code church, and go to onnit dot com and use promo code church to get ten percent off all of their great optimization products like Alpha Brain and New Mood.